Jesus is the Savior. He reigns on high. It's all Jesus. It's not about preachers. It's not about friends. It's not about family and all that sort of stuff. It's all about Jesus. It's not about politicians. It's not about doctors. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not about our favorite soap star or whoever's in the news this week or our favorite footballer. It's all about Jesus. Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise. You are the name above every name. Jesus, you are holy and we glorify you today. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, hopefully our tech's going to be working in a, in a few moments. Hopefully our, uh, we, well, I don't know what's happening with the cameras. I've got a feeling one of the HDMI leads has probably just given up the ghost because we're sending too much quality through it, as you can see. Welcome the church everyone uh, it is Sunday and we are ready for church we're all we're all like in our worship mode I'm a little bit fired up I'll tell you what them songs though I'm not gonna lie to you folks when them songs come on that um, that another in the fire it just gets me going I feel like I'm gonna like like kick off you know what I mean like in the spirit um I feel like you know you, you know you know you get to that point don't you right when you're worshiping it's like you, you think like if any of the darkness you know any of the enemy tries coming in me now they're just gonna get blown away you know because I'm like flowing I'm I'm, I'm beast in it I'm like shouting out and you lot are probably like oh does he have to do that every week you know what I mean like but I'm just kicking off in the name of Jesus worshiping the best way that I can the only way that I can with my voice with my body with my hands uh, Lord I, I'll give you praise once again I hope he's using, my, using me at the moment, you know what I mean? Like, honestly, we're, we're doing so much just now. We're literally giving away, like, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of food for free. Uh, we're, we're, we're out in the streets. We're leading people to faith in Jesus Christ. We're getting demons out of people's houses. You know, we're getting, we're, we're getting whole estates, whole, whole, like, streets and cities and stuff, like, totally, totally blessed in the name of Jesus. And we're just smashing it because he gave us life, right? He gave us life and life in all of its fullness. Um, we, uh, we, we love Jesus here. We really, really really do. And I want to help you to love Jesus as well. About three years ago, I was talking to him. I was talking to Jesus and I said, I said, I'm not sure why all these people don't want to grow in your God. You know, what's, what's all this stuff all about? I, you know, I, I don't get why people don't want to have a better life. I don't get why I don't want to go a bit further into, into your goodness. I don't know why I don't want to live the life that you have offering uh, for them. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm like, how do we work this out? And he says, well, if they love Jesus, if they love me, then, uh, then they will want to do what, uh, what I say. Uh, and Jesus said in the scriptures, didn't he? If you love, uh, if you love him, you'll keep his commands. Okay. So, when, so I'm like, well, how do we do that? And he said, well, if you show them Jesus, if you show them Jesus, then they will love him. So uh, every morning. Every Sunday, uh, I jump up here uh, for about three years now, and I talk about Jesus every single week, because that's how we roll. And today is no different. So we're looking at uh, the, the story of Joshua. We're going through Jesus in the Old Testament. So, uh, so you know, the New Testament is where Jesus comes into creation, more or less, okay? So, um, so we can see Jesus all the way through that, and we do do every day. In fact, on, uh, on weekday mornings, uh, Monday to Thursday, 9.30 a.m., we have a morning Bible study, which is live online. Uh, you can join in with that. You can join in the Zoom chat. You can join in. It's really, really easy. And we talk about uh, Jesus' words. We look at his actual words. And then on Sundays, what we're doing is we're going through Jesus in the Old Testament. So uh, like, how do we find Jesus in the story of Adam? How do we find Jesus in the story of Moses? You know, all these different stories. And today, we're on to Joshua. So Joshua is uh, Moses' understudy. And then he takes over from Moses. So it's, it's, it's sort of like his successor. So when Moses died, he hands the baton on to Joshua. You know, and he says, here, you, know, you lead the people into the promised land. And so the book of Joshua is about God's people coming into the promised land. And uh, straight away, as soon as we get into it, what happens is we get to this, uh, this moment in Joshua chapter 2. I was actually surprised this morning when I started looking into my scriptures uh, to find out where this story is. I thought it was going to be like halfway through Joshua, if I'm honest. I thought that this this was like this is almost like the pinnacle of Joshua. This is like this moment in history, and so I thought it's going to be like uh, right in the middle, you know, like in the heart of Joshua. But it's not. It's in chapter two, and we're talking about a lady called Rahab, and uh, and you might be thinking, who's Rahab? And I thought you were talking about Joshua. Well. Rahab is in Joshua's story. So let me just uh, give you a little rundown of who Joshua is, and then, uh, and then we'll go into what the Lord wants to teach us today, if that's all right. So Joshua, like I say, is Moses' understudy, and, uh, and it was his job to lead people from the desert where they were, where they were in, uh, under like a trial from God into the promised land where Jesus, well, not well, Jesus did say, but God said, uh, Yahweh said, there'll be uh, a land flown with milk and honey, basically a land of prosperity, a land of 
goodness. Um, although, obviously, they had battles and they fought whilst they were there. They had struggles. And uh, as everyone does, you know, because although we have moved on into the kingdom of God and we are in, we're living in the land of prosperity uh, in, terms of, in terms of God's kingdom, um, there are still struggles, isn't there? You know what I mean? We still struggle right now. The biggest struggle is COVID, isn't it? You know, next week, you know, when COVID's gone, <laughs> next week, it'll be a little longer now. That's not a prophecy, by the way. You know what I mean? Like, I reckon COVID's going to be here for another year yet. You know what I'm saying? But, but Lord, let it be next week when COVID's gone. Um, come on. Um, but um, but when, when COVID's gone, there'll be another struggle after that. You know, it might be that, you know, your job's not the way it needs to be, or it could be that your car breaks down. Like, yesterday, we were out in a church van. I started it up. It must have been like minus three out there. And the engine light come on. I'm like, oh, no, I can't believe it you know oh, I've got to spend more money I've got to take the van off the road for a day you know all that sort of stuff oh what a headache you know what I mean and the worst thing is the only day that I can take the van off the road is a Sunday and then I'm at church all day and the garage isn't open on a Sunday so it's like what do I do anyway so there's struggles there all the time even though we're living in the promised land there's always going to be struggles around us Jesus said the poor will always be with us so it's unbiblical if we try to um, if we try to do away with poverty yeah so, you know what I mean there's always going to be a struggle. There's always going to be a struggle until we get to heaven. And then it's going to be plain sailing. It says that in heaven, there's going to be no pain, no fear, no anxiety, no emotional hurt, no, no struggle in that, re- in that respect. There's going, to be, um, there's going to be no like sadness. There's going to be no like tears or fears or anything like that. It's going to be totally cool. And here, is that in a way? Way up. Um, <laughs> it was in a way. And now it's not, but it's in your hand. Um, <laughs> it comes into four parts, mate. Um, j- we, we, we have little heaters around church, and um, Pastor Harry's just tried to grab a heater and move it because it's in my way, apparently, and, uh, and uh, he's torn it apart. Um, so, so, yeah, like, even though we uh, are in the promised land, I still struggle, is what I'm saying. Even though we live in the land of prosperity, the kingdom of prosperity, and the kingdom of goodness, and the kingdom of life, even though we live in that place, there's still struggles, isn't there? And it's still hard, and, and, and people still die, and people still get ill, and people still get poor, and stuff like that. It's just the way things go, unfortunately, whilst we're in this in-between kingdom, because we are living in the old age, you know, the, the age of sin. And then we're also living in the kingdom to come as soon as you become a Christian. And so we're living in this in-between time. We're living in the old age and the age to come. And so we do have moments of prosperity, but we also have moments of sadness and hurt, you know? Um, and so we see the same. We see the same. And that's what happened to the Israelites, I say. Okay, so Joshua is the guy, though, that is like the guy who takes them in. And he takes over the land. And he looks after them in that respect. And he separates all of the, all the different people up. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the story of Joshua. Let me tell you about how we can find Jesus in Joshua. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a story about when Joshua and the people of Israel went and took over a major city. I mean like a major, major city. A fortified city. A stronghold. Uh, with the power of God, they overcame a stronghold uh, of, the, of the enemy. Okay? Isn't that good news? Come on. Hold on. I'm not going to talk about that today. Although, now you're going, please do, Pastor. Um, <laughs> you, with the power of God, with Yahweh on their side, they overcame the stronghold uh, of the enemy. Hallelujah. And so... We're looking at Joshua chapter 2, um, verse uh, 15 onwards. So basically what's happened is um, the guys have been sent into, uh, into Jericho. There's like 10 spies that have been sent in. Go and check out Jericho, okay? Because we need to know what it's like in there. We need to know whether, you know, whether we're going to be able to um, strategically take over this city and whether we're going to win this battle, okay? Okay, so what happens is 10 fellas go in, 8 come out saying strategically... Humanly, it's impossible. We're all going to die. Uh, and then two go in, and they find this moment. Okay, so um, so let's read from Joshua chapter two, verse fifteen. Okay, so they have found a lady called Rahab, and Rahab has let them in. Okay, has let them into the city, and she's hidden them. Okay, she's hidden them from the uh, from the guards in Jericho, and she's basically saying, um, you know, I believe in Yahweh. I think you guys are going to win this. We're trembling in fear, and so. Um, And so Joshua and those guys, uh, or Joshua and Caleb rather, are like, hey, cool, excellent. Can you hide us until we come back? And then this happens. Then Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall, so that she was living on the wall. She said to them, go to the hill country so that the pursuers will not happen upon you and hide yourselves there for three days until the pursuers return. Then afterward... 
you may go on your way. The men said to her, we shall be free from this oath to you which you have made to us swear unless we come into the land. Uh, you tie this cord of scarlet thread in the window through which you let us down and gather to yourself into your house your father and your mother and your brothers and all your father's household and it shall come to pass that anyone who goes out of the doors of your house in the, into the street, his blood shall be on his own head uh, and we shall be free. But anyone who is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him. But if you tell this business of ours, uh, then we shall be free from the oath which we have, uh, which we have made us swear. Uh, she said, according to your words, so, uh, so be it. So she sent them away and they departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Okay, so. What's happening right here? What's happening is Joshua and Caleb um, have been hidden by a lady called Rahab, okay? And Rahab is a prostitute, okay? She's a prostitute and she is a, a person of Jericho, so she's an outsider, she's a sinner, and, and she's uh, got these two guys who she's hidden who are from God. She is blessing the righteous men, okay? And so what happens is um, she has an agreement with them. I won't tell anyone that you've been. I'll even let you back into the city. I'll do anything you asked me to do on the condition that you save my family, okay? And so Joshua and Caleb say, um, let it be said that if you tie this red cord, this scarlet cord uh, in your window, then no one in your household uh, will, will be, will be uh, harmed at all when we come in to destroy the city, okay? And so in this moment, what we see is a promise uh, as, uh, which is represented by a scarlet cord, okay? And the promise is, um, even though you're an outsider, even though you're a sinner, you will be saved. Isn't that good news? Yeah? That's cool, isn't it? Where's Jesus in this? Do you mind me tell you where Jesus is in this? Yeah, come on, come on, come on. So, um, so um, where does Scarlet come from? Because a, a little while ago, when, uh, when I must have been probably two years ago now, I, I, I was sitting there and I was doing a, a sermon about, um, about the, the leper who was healed. Okay? I was doing Jesus' miracles. Okay? And the leper was healed. And it says that he, he should go to the high priest and, show, and give the offering that Moses commanded. And part of the offering uh, was to wrap up a bird onto a stick uh, with a scarlet cord, okay? Scarlet cords are quite regular in the, uh, in the Old Testament. And you have to wonder, what, what's this all about? What's a scarlet cord all about? And the Holy Spirit led me to start researching where scarlet cords come from. So the color scarlet, the dye scarlet, okay, um, comes from a little bug. It's, it's a bit like, almost like a caterpillar, I guess, but si similar to a caterpillar that would, um, that would choose, um, it would choose for itself a special tree. Okay, and this little bug would go to a special tree and give its life. It would die in a special place on this tree, on a certain type of tree. And as it dies, the uh, its body would sort of um, uh, how do I how do I explain this? Masticize, uh, I think is the, is the technical term. But it basically meant that its its body would change and and the components would change inside of its body um, and would become this uh, this like fine powder uh, that is used to create uh, scarlet dye. Okay, so you ready for this? Because this is the truth. The scarlet yarn represents Jesus on a cross who chose to go to a certain tree on a certain day and chose to lay down his life to give a blessing. Come on. You know what I mean? Isn't that cool? That's how Jesus is represented in this story. Okay, so Jesus uh, being the, oh, I'm getting all goosebumps, Holy Spirit's nearby. Um, <laughs> Jesus being, being the scarlet yarn, uh, Jesus on the cross being represented in the scarlet yarn, represented the promise for Rahab that even though you're an outsider, even though you're a foreigner, even though you don't belong to us, you're welcome. You know, Rahab is a special person. If you go to the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of Matthew, as you start to read through the lineage of Jesus, you know, you can go from Adam down to Jesus. Rahab's one of the person in his lineage. Who, who knows how it happened? 
me and Pastor Harry were like sitting there looking at our scriptures trying to work out, uh, you know, one of the sentences just there in verse 8 it says, um, it says that the guys, the two, um, the two guys who were, who were spies uh, went up onto the roof and it says as they lay down. Now in the Old Testament oftentimes they don't really have a word for sexual encounters so they would say they would lay with one another, okay? And so we were sitting there going, I wonder if this is the moment. It isn't, it isn't, you know what I mean? But it isn't, I wonder if this is the moment. It wasn't. But it's just interesting that, that the outsider, the prostitute, the foreigner, she was welcomed in, not just welcomed in, but she played a pivotal role in the coming of the Messiah. Isn't that good news? You know, so if you're an outsider today, if you think that you don't belong in church today, if you're struggling with, oh, you know, I, wanna, I really want to know Jesus, but uh, these Christians I just can't really get on with, and they always look down their nose at me. I feel like they're always judging me. First of all, let me tell you, we're not judging you. You know, I, I am a sinner. You know, I am a sinner saved by grace, big time, man. I used to like do all sorts of funky stuff that I'm not going to mention just now because we'll be here all day because my list is so long. Honestly, I was a sinner and I, and I still do the odd one or two just now as well. I'm not going to lie to you, but I have a saviour who is good and faithful, someone who, will, who I can totally and utterly rely on to forgive me and, and to help me in times of need. My Bible says that if I confess my sins, then he is faithful and just to forgive me. Isn't that good news? And so even though I, Darren, was an outsider, I was welcomed into the church. I was welcomed into the body of God. I was, I was welcomed into his family. I was welcomed into the royal family. And so you are too. If you're an outsider, if you feel like you just don't fit this scene, let me tell you, all of us feel like that. We all feel like that from time to time. We always feel like, man, I'm not sure that I can be holy. I'm not sure that I can stop swearing. I'm not sure that I can stop smoking. Who ever said stop smoking anyway? You know what I mean? Like, we don't. You know, half our church stands outside having a cigarette on a Sunday. You know what I mean? Honestly, whoever said it, I don't know who said it, but, you know, if you're a smoker and you think, I can't come to church because I smoke, that's a lie. Get yourself down here. Honestly, if you feel like an outsider, you're welcome. Outsiders are welcome. Maybe you feel like a, a bit of a sinner today. Maybe you could even be a prostitute watching today. Hey, let me tell you, Rahab was a prostitute and she played a part. Um, uh, are we good? You all right? Camera's working all right? Yeah, cool. Um, so um, so Rahab uh, was a prostitute, okay? And you might be feeling like, oh man, um, does that mean that if I'm a prostitute, I can become part of God's kingdom? Well, yes. Isn't that good news? Um, maybe you feel like, man, uh, you know, uh, I'm a big shop businessman, you know, and uh, I'm not sure that rich people are allowed in church. Well, rich people are, that's good news, isn't it? You, maybe you think, oh, I live on the council estate, I live, on, I live, in, I live in the poorest place ever, and, and maybe I don't belong. Well, guess what? You do. Maybe you're like me. Maybe you've stolen cars. Maybe you've, maybe you've like, taken drugs. Maybe you're taking drugs right now. Maybe you're literally high at this moment as you're watching this live stream. And Jesus wants to say, hey, you're welcome. I want to welcome you in. I want to bring you into my family. I want to put you into our lineage. I want you to be part of Jesus' kingdom. Right now, you're welcome. You're welcome. Just like Rahab was. Outsiders are welcome. Sinners are welcome. Come as you are. Stay as you are. It's not that big a deal. When you get to heaven, everything's going to be different anyway. You're welcome. And the king wants you to be part of all of this, all of this promise. And this scarlet yarn in Joshua's story, this scarlet yarn represents a promise for you. It re represents a promise that Jesus will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never come in condemnation of you. He'll never send you to hell. If you choose to follow him, then you're his. You're going to heaven. Simple as that. He'll never leave you, the Bible says. Other people might have left you. You may have been rejected, but Jesus will never reject you. That's a promise. The promise is that when you get to heaven, there'll be no more fear, no more tears, no more sadness, no more emotional outbursts or, 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 or like strongholds in your life that are holding you back from fullness. Because when you get to heaven, the promise is that that will cease. It says that the sun will never set in heaven. It's always daytime up there. I don't know what I'm going to do. I like a bit of sleep, you know what I mean? Like, although saying that, afternoon sleep is one of the best, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? But Jesus says the promise is that he is going to, he's going to build you a house in heaven once you start following him, once you're a follower of Jesus. He says, I am going to build you a house in heaven. In fact, it's not even a house, you know. My Bible says a mansion. My mansion's going to be right next door to Jesus's. 
You know what I mean? Like, no, nah, kid, I kid. It probably will be. No, 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 I better not go there. But my mansion is going to be probably just down the road a little bit from Jesus. I want some of them nice LED lights around my swimming pool. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to have a swimming pool in your mansion? You're having a jacuzzi? Ah, see, either or, I'm having both. <laughs> Glory. I'm going to have, like, I'm going to have lamb for dinner every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have steak every week as well. I mean, like, when I get to heaven, yeah, I'm going to eat, like, pigs in blankets every day for breakfast. I'm not even kidding you, right? It's going to be amazing. But the promise is this. Jesus is gone before you. Here's another thing. The promise is that because he went through death, you know, the Bible says that Jesus died on a cross, right? And, and, and because he went through death, the promise is if you're his today, if you follow him today, then the promise is this. As you go through death, he will be by your side. You don't have to do it alone. Because he's been there, he stays there for you. If you're worried about death today, then don't. Don't. Think about Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus, keep this in mind. In the same way as he's been with you today, and he's going to be with you tomorrow, as you walk through the valley or the shadow of death, guess who's there? Jesus. That's his promise. That's his promise. So don't be so fearful, honestly, because he's, he wants to hold you. He wants to hold your hand as you walk through death, as you walk into life everlasting. He wants to lead you through that. He doesn't want you to do it all by yourself. The promise is that he's been there. He'll go there again. He's there for you right now. And he's up in heaven. It says that he's still praying for you. He's praying for you to come through. He's praying for you to do well. He's praying for things uh, to be blessings in your life, even though you don't even know what you need. He's there praying for you right now. And I might not, pres- uh, I not, might, might not believe in the perseverance of the saints, but I want to tell you this. I believe in the perseverance of the Savior because he is the king above all kings. He is the Lord above all lords. He is God above all other gods. He is the name above all names. He is the prince of peace. He is my coming king. He is my healer. He is my saviour. He is everything to me. That is my Jesus. And he has a promise for you today. In the same way as a scarlet cord, as a scarlet yarn, represents a promise to Rahab for freedom, for liberty, for salvation, for, for, for no harm to come against her. In the same way as that scarlet cord, Jesus represents a promise for Rahab. It represents a promise for you today as well. In Jesus' name. From today, you will not fear death. From today, you you will look forward to heaven. You will put your hope in what's above, not in what's below. You'll put your you'll put your faith and your and your energy into uh, preparing yourself for the King and His kingdom. And from today, uh, I believe that if you want to, you can start living in the promise that He has planned for you. Hallelujah! So, with all that in mind, glory. Um, I'm wondering whether we could pray. And then we're going to worship again. Then we're going to come back here and we could go through some of them promises. And maybe today you're feeling like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm really struggling with this thing at the moment. I'm really struggling with, you know, my job isn't going quite right. Please, can you pray for me? We want to pray for you. Maybe you're thinking, oh, you know, I really need a new car. My engine lights come on and mine. Um, uh, You know, maybe your engine lights come on this week and and you just need to go. I remember once I'd run out of petrol coming back to uh, Malvern where I was at Bible College. I ran out of petrol at halfway back from like, uh, I think it was like, Birmingham I was in and I was like man Jesus we'll just sort us out I'll just make this car go a little bit further on you know I'm not sure when it's going to run out but we're getting real close to the bottom and uh, we managed to get all the way back to Malvern which is a miracle by the way I'm not going to lie I remember once I was in Worcester right I was in Worcester and I was delivering gospel tracts just a little little gospel explanation Jesus died and rose again because of this reason and he wants you to follow him on the back was a prayer prayer request card right that people could post back to us right and I, I had 800 of these to deliver and got halfway through the day I've delivered like 200 because one of those estates where they've got long driveways, you know, the posh ones, right? And uh, and oh, I had a lot of blisters upon blisters. I had, I had a blister on top of a blister on top of a blister. It was awful, right? And um, and, and I remember just halfway through the day, I'm hungry, right? I'm thinking, I can't have a lunch break. I'm not going to get all this done. Jesus, you're going to have to extend the day. I'm not even going to lie to you. I got all 800 out that day. It was wonderful, wasn't it? I think he made the sun stop in the sky. Anyway, he does amazing things and he wants to do it for you as well. He really, really does. He made the sun stop once, he'll do it again. He rose the dead once, he'll do it again. You know what I'm saying? He healed once, he'll do it again. Jesus is still alive. He's still working. He's still doing those things in everyone's lives today. And he still wants you to be part of his kingdom. And he has this promise for you. He has this promise for you. I will never leave you or forsake you, even in death. Even in death. 
Let's pray. If you want to follow Jesus today, you can pray this prayer with me. And then we're going to have another song uh, when I say amen at the end of this. And then, uh, and then what's going to happen is me and Pastor Harry are going to come back down here and we'll go through some of this stuff with you. We really want to answer your questions. We want you to respond. We want you to, uh, to ask us more about our sermon today and, uh, and the things of God that are happening around us. Um, we, you, know, you can ask us anything, honestly. Respond. Tell us that you've given your life to Christ. Tell us that you're choosing to follow him today. Because honestly, um, he has some wonderful promises for you and uh, and we don't want you to miss anything i love that song is it aerosmith don't want to miss a thing anyway um <laughs> glory uh almost about my accents thanks pastor harry um <laughs> glory that is a song isn't it you know the one i'm on about is that one isn't it you know in that film anyway lord lord be telling me off now i don't want to close my eyes yeah that's the one I don't want to miss a thing. Yeah, something like that anyway. <laughs> Liam's like, Darren, just stop. I mean, Dad. I'm your dad, bro. You know, stop calling me Darren all the time. <laughs> Glory, let's pray. Yeah, thanks, Pastor Harry. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Kingdom's good, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is such joyous times, man. Come on. Um, I, 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 like, Jesus promises joy as well, you know? He promises joy. We don't have to take ourselves too seriously all the time. Um, he promises us joy. He promises us hope. You know, he gives us peace. Do you want that today? Do you want to move on into his kingdom? Do you want to move into his belonging? You know, he wants to be your possession. He wants you to be his. You know, he wants to give you all of himself. Do you want him today? If the answer is yes, then pray this prayer with me. Pray out loud as well, even if you're old fellas like sitting next to you making you feel awkward. Just pray out loud. Jesus, I say yes to you today. I want to be yours. I want to be part of your kingdom. I want a fresh start. I want to follow you. Amen.